Hi there. Thank you for joining us on the program, Your Doctor and COVID. I'm Dr. Mahendra Karpin, Head of Medical Services and Cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. And today we'll be looking at interesting questions posed to us by our audience members, the listeners and viewers of this program. Remember, you can send your question to 620-MASK, that's 620-6275 or email us at docandcovid at gmail.com. That's docandcovid at gmail.com. So thank you very much for joining us. And I'm going to get straight into how I normally start this program. This is the right way to wear your mask. You see how I'm wearing mine. It's covering both my nose and my mouth. It is not correct to wear it under the nose. You will expose yourself and others around you to potential infection with the COVID-19 virus, and worse yet, to wear it under your chin, okay? So I will take mine off because today I'm alone in studio. As I talk to you here, there's no one next to me, so I'm not a risk to them, and there's no one here who's posing a risk to me. So this is something that we received from someone over the last couple of hours. And here's a scenario. The patient says, I am a patient who had COVID-19. The only symptoms I am having is loss of taste and smell. I was in isolation, but sent home because I am feeling better. My taste and smell is on and off. So, what is the question from this person? How long would it take for me to get back my taste and smell? And is there anything I can use to get back the taste and smell earlier? These are very important questions. And if you were following our previous conversations, you had noticed that I would have mentioned this several times that the loss of taste and smell is something that we have recognized a little bit later than the original shortness of breath, fever and cough that everyone was paying attention to. So loss of taste and smell is in now a quite a well-recognized association of the COVID-19 infection. So here's this person who had the COVID-19 infection and has had loss of taste and smell, sending in questions for us. How long do we think that this will take to come back to normal? And is there anything they can use to get it back to normal? So loss of taste and smell very commonly coexist. And of course, taste of food depends very closely on your sense of smell. And you can try that, and you may have noticed that, for example, times when you would have had flu and stuffy nose or so in before the era of COVID, perhaps food used to taste a little bit different when you had the stuffy nose. And once that cleared up, you know, you recognize back the taste of food. So the smell is very, very closely associated to how you recognize taste as well. So 80% of COVID-19 patients have some subjective complaint of loss of taste and smell. Imagine that, 80%, that's four out of every five person who are COVID positive, have some loss of or some dysfunction of taste and smell. And it is the first or only symptom in about 25% of positive patients. So one in four person will have loss of taste and smell as the first or only symptom of COVID-19. So we are recognizing how common and how important is this particular complaint in a diagnosis of COVID-19. Now, what is the cause for the loss of smell. Loss of smell in medical jargon is called anosmia. And the main possible causes in the COVID-19 pandemic is usually 
divided among two things. One is congestion and the other one is an inflammatory process that affects the nerves which is which is responsible for your interpretation of smell. So the congestion is usually temporary and that we see like any other congestive process that causes an inflammation in the nose and increase um, production of nasal discharge and swelling up of the nasal passage, that congestion can actually affect the sense of smell. More significantly, we can have an inflammatory process that actually affect the nerve endings, which are located in the upper parts at the back of the nose. And those are called olfactory nerve endings. Those together, when they combine, they then interpret what you are smelling and transmit that interpretation uh, together. They send that to the brain and then your brain basically says, oh, this is something I'm smelling which is like citrus or coffee or fried chicken or whatever it is that you're smelling. That is how the brain actually interprets this. It's dependent on what the nerve endings in the nostril or the nose picks up and then combines all of that and sends it along up to the brain and then the brain makes a judgment as to what it is that you are smelling. So how do you actually test your own smell? You use common things like coffee or tea, which are maybe scented, and citrus like orange, lime or so. If you, other things like bleach and stuff may sometimes actually create an irritant reaction and it is not recommended that you use those things for testing, okay? So if you're going to test your smell and taste, then find something that has a strong characteristic smell. Food, for example, that you've been eating may be a good option, such as coffee, cinnamon, or garlic. You can also choose non-food things like baby powder or scented candle, things that you can actually recognize. And for taste, locate foods with different taste characteristics. Some good examples include things like chocolate, which is sweet, citrus, oranges, lime, tangerine, that's sour, coffee, which is bitter, and some salty stuff, whether it be salted nuts and pretzels or potato chips. Those are good things for you to be able to test the various types of taste that you may have. If you find that you have trouble picking up on the sense or taste of your selected items, you may be experiencing a loss of smell or taste. So those are things you could actually do at home to find out if you really are affected. And now, if that turns out that you're affected, don't panic. Some of it, the majority of it actually is transient and it's not permanent and it's very likely to return back to normal. So the first question, how long would it take for me to get back my taste and smell? For a regular cold, for example, this can take about three to seven days. So that's three days to a week, okay? The Center for Disease Control evaluated 274 patients who were COVID positive. And in these patients who had loss of taste and smell, the median duration for this to persist was about eight days. In the European study, which was a little bit smaller, their median duration was eight to nine days. To be accurate, it was actually 8.9, but you know, 0.9, we're better off to understand it as eight to nine days. So just over a week and less than two weeks. And 98% of everyone affected by loss of taste and smell would have recovered and cleared up this issue by one month or 28 days. So it may be a little scary and concerning when it happens, but the vast majority, 98% of people will recover this function taste and smell by one month. 
So not to panic, not to worry. And the second question, is there anything I can use to get back taste and smell earlier? These are my thoughts on this. There are no specific treatment yet. No one has recommended that, well, take this tablet, it will come back or do this or do that. But you may consider to boost your immune system with the right foods and supplements. And these foods and supplements would include things that are high in vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. You would have seen in our earlier conversations that I highlighted a lot of foods that we can find right in our own country, in our own kitchen gardens, that are rich in vitamin C. These include things like your oranges, your tangerines, lime, Everything that's sour generally is quite good in vitamin C. For vitamin D, you want to have things like papa, mangoes, meats and nuts. That's very high in um, vitamin D. And of course, um, zinc, again, lots of meat and liver, etc. Those things are high in, in zinc. So you may want to consider increasing consumption of those things. And hopefully you will start to have an improvement in taste and smell that you could ap appreciate how good they actually taste and smell. And of course, if this prolongs more than the 28 days that is expected for full recovery, one may seek medical advice, especially if it's also worsening. So let us look at some of the overlaps between four common things that can simulate or present like COVID. So let's look at COVID-19 versus the flu versus a common cold or allergies. And you will see here that there's a good reason why everything these days that shows up like a flu or a common cold, we also are considering COVID-19 because there's so much overlap with the presentation. So for COVID-19, for example, you have cough, fever or chills, shortness of breath, loss of taste of, of smell, tiredness, headache, body aches and sore throat, which is very similar to flu, which has fever of chills, cough, and body aches as well, which is very similar again to the common cold with runny or stuffy nose, sore throat, chest congestion, coughing, and body aches. The one that is a little bit outside of this is the allerg allergies or allergic reactions. A lot of people may be allergic to specific foods, may be allergic to pollen or dust, and that is the one that is associated with runny nose or itchiness, sneezing, itchy, watery eyes. So it's actually very important to recognize that there's so many overlaps that if you're having symptoms that you are writing off and say, oh, this might be the flu or this might just be my cold that I normally get, let's say February or August or September, it may not be that. There's so much overlap in the symptoms that it could actually be COVID-19. So be on the alert for that. Be vigilant and watch out for it. So what are the warning signs that we should actually be very much aware of? And in COVID-19 patients, the warning signs, the ones that you know of from our previous conversations, fever, cough, shortness of breath, but what is most significant that you should seek help for things like persistent pain or chest pressure or if you start to have significant shortness of breath cannot hold your breath for more than 10 seconds these are conditions in which you would seek immediate medical assistance so remember if you have any questions for us please feel free to text or whatsapp to 620 mask that's 620-MASK or 620-6275 or email docandcovid at gmail.com. That docandcovid at gmail.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.